Now at nine, how the Baxter Springs Police Department plans to spend a $160,000 in federal funding. Plus, Missouri Southern gives local students and entrepreneurs a chance to pitch their business ideas in a competition. And Frontenac students take a trip to Greenbush to learn some life skills. The four states most watched news starts now. This is KOAM News at 9 on Fox 14. I'm Tanya Bach. The Baxter Springs Police Department is receiving more than $160,000 in federal funds. Now, these funds will be used for technological upgrades. Specifically, the Baxter Springs Police Department plans to buy 10 body cameras and six car cameras, among other items. KOAM's Fernanda Silva has more. One of the big benefits for the community of the cameras, for example, is transparency. A transparency that, according to Baxter Springs Chief of Police, can go long ways. I'll we'll be able to show them that we are doing things the right way for the right reason, and we're not perfect. There are times we might mess up, and if we mess up, we want to be, okay, we messed up, this is what we messed up on, and this is what we're doing to correct it. He says the cameras can also help prosecutors in the court system. Now they have video evidence of, uh, for example, if somebody, if we arrest somebody for drunk driving. U.S. Senator Jerry Moran and supported the federal funding. The community is safer when the police department is trained and has the tools necessary to do their jobs in the best way. Uh, and that also protects the officers themselves. So safety for the police officer, but when, when they're doing their jobs with the latest technology and the right kind of training, they're not making the mistakes that might cause harm to somebody in the community. Currently, the police department only has cheaper versions of body cameras, but they don't have cameras in their vehicles. We're, we're kind of behind the times. In Baxter Springs, Fernanda Silva, KOAM News. The funding will also help the Baxter Springs police upgrade their less lethal lasers, tasers, excuse me. Police Chief Brian Henderson expects to have the items in place by midsummer. Well, Chief Meteorologist Doug Hetty joins us for the first look at weather. Well, it turned out to be a warmer day for us today. Back to where we should be for this time of the year. 66 still had a freeze this morning third night in a row we will not have one tonight 64 41 are the averages record is 87 degrees 55 in joplin 53 in pittsburgh we look pretty good the winds are going to pick up as we go through the night we're not going to drop off too much more maybe 48 to about 50 degrees but look at our winds by tomorrow gusting 40 upwards to 50 miles per hour so they're going to get really moving not much going on just a few little clouds kind of skirting through the region, but overall we are looking pretty good. Wind advisory in effect tomorrow, warming up the next few days. Thunderstorm chances Sunday and Monday. Some could be strong to severe. We're going to be talking about that here in just a bit. All right, thanks, Doug. The city of Pittsburgh turns 150 in 2026, so a local organization is already planning the celebrations. The Celebrate Pittsburgh Committee has launched Pittsburgh 150, and today they held a public meeting to discuss the plans. Residents were able to jot down ideas, memories, and give input pertaining to the city and its historic birthday. Attendees met the folks behind Celebrate Pittsburgh, learned about the initiative, and ways to get involved. I want a giant Ferris wheel. I don't know where I'm going to put it, but I would love at some point to have a giant Ferris wheel um, that we could bring to Pittsburgh for a weekend or for a festival for a whole week. Honestly, I'm more excited to see what other people are suggesting. Um, I'm excited to see Pittsburgh grow and what form that takes. I'm excited as well. The committee plans to have events all year long throughout 2026. Well, local students today gathered at Missouri Southern to pitch their business ideas. MSSU's Missouri's Small Business Development Center hosted the inaugural Pitch Palooza. It was open to any high school or college students, as well as members of the public with an entrepreneurial spirit. Not only was it a chance to get their ideas out there, money was also on the line in the form of scholarships and a Joplin Chamber of Commerce membership. Because we want people to understand that entrepreneurship is alive and well in the Southwest Missouri area. Um, and it's just to get people used to talking about their business ideas. Maybe it's to make connections for our college students especially. We want them to understand that entrepreneurship is a well and viable path for them in the future. And we can really get them connected with like-minded folks. 
The contest was broken into four categories. High school and college students competed for a $1,000 scholarship, while entrepreneurs competed for the chamber memberships. Seventh graders from Frontenac Junior High School learned the skill, learned life skills at Greenbush and Girard today. KOM's Amber Jenkins has more. Have any questions? The annual Life Skills Day for Frontenac seventh graders means a field trip to Greenbush to learn basic cooking skills. And I was a little stressed out at first, but so far it seems like it's going pretty well and the kids are enjoying themselves. And we're just teaching them some basic cooking things that they should be able to do on their own. Usually the Greenbush staff travels to the middle school to teach, but this year, 65 seventh graders went to them. I was like, yeah, I, I was really excited because when they, when they first announced the Greenbush trip and I was like, okay, what kind are we doing? And they're like, we're going to go cooking. And I'm just like, are you serious? I love cooking. Gabe's group started the day making roasted chickpeas and granola from scratch. It feels like oats, but I don't, it's not wet or anything. Well, well, uh, yeah. <laughs> my mom bakes and then my dad cooks. And I, re I really like cooking. I really like cooking and baking. I'm a lot of an artistic kind of guy. I'm not, I'm more in arts than sports. So it's not. The seventh graders aren't just understanding basic cooking, but learning new ingredients as well. I didn't know, like, I thought chickpeas were like a nut, not like a seed. I thought they were like, kind of like a peanut, like, I, but I didn't know they were like a, like a seed. Reporting in Gerard, Amber Jenkins, KOM News. Sixth and eighth graders also got off campus. They spent the day touring some departments at PSU. Elementary students in Carthage this week raise money for St. Jude Children's Hospital. It's part of a competition called Penny Wars at Mark Twain Elementary. The teacher or principal whose group raised the most money had the honor of getting slimed today in front of the entire school. Oh, absolutely. Oh, it's yeah, for a great for cause. Sure. Um, yeah. St. Jude's is a great research facility and it's able to do so much for kids. Um, since I lost my daughter four years ago, if I can help do something to keep another family from having to go through that, I would do it in a heartbeat. The school raised a total of $4,000 through donations from students and staff. That's amazing. The Joplin Art Gallery today made a donation to Watered Gardens Ministries. Local color art gallery recently hosted its annual open house and art auction to raise money for an area organization. And this year that organization is Watered Gardens. Today, the gallery presented a check for the proceeds worth $1,100. Many of our artists here already support Watered Gardens. We have our two potters um, make bowls for their empty bowls event. And I think we've just seen the work that they do to help the homeless and um, in our community, and we wanted to be a part of that. Local Color Art Gallery is currently partnering with Downtown Gallery of Joplin, raising money for the Joplin Humane Society. Coming up, how remembering the acronym SWISH can help you prevent exercise injuries. The CDC is alerting doctors to watch for unusual symptoms as a rare but serious bacterial infection is on the rise in the U.S. The infections are caused by a strain of Neisseria meningitis bacteria. Meningitis symptoms usually include fever, headache, nausea, and a stiff neck. However, many of the recent cases instead present with bloodstream infections and about 4% with painful infected joints. Cases of MPOX, formerly known as monkeypox, are on the rise in the U.S. According to CDC data, there have been 511 cases reported this year through March 16th. And through the same period last year, there were fewer than 300 cases. Still, transmission rates are below levels from 2022 when there were tens of thousands of cases. MPOX is a less severe cousin of the now eradicated smallpox virus. Well, it's one of the most important things you can do for your health. Regular physical activity can help your brain strengthen bones and muscles, boost energy and aid in weight management. But it's important to prepare your body for exercise. Mandy Gaither explains how remembering the acronym SWISH can help prevent injuries. 
It's spring, and if you're exercising more to be healthier or to prepare for swimsuit season, make sure your body is ready. It's important to prepare to provide yourself the best chance at not getting injured. Dr. Tracy Nogle with Orlando Health says not preparing can lead to injuries like ankle or ligament sprains, muscle or tendon strains. If you're not strength training and stuff like that, around your joints, you can um, have shoulder injuries or knee injuries such as like an ACL, um, and then getting in stretching and stuff like that to prevent injuries to the calves and the Achilles is all very important. To help you remember to prevent injuries, Nogle says to use the acronym SWISH. S stands for stretching. Do this before and after activity. W is for wearing the proper equipment, such as supportive shoes, and if you need them, ankle or knee braces. I, ignoring an injury is a bad idea. Nogle says not to tough it out. Instead, see a doctor. Getting a doctor's uh, approval to push through some of those pains, I think, is important um, in determining whether or not it is something that can turn into something worse down the road if you keep playing. The second S is for strength training. Keeping muscles strong can help your body avoid strains or tears. Finally, H is for hydrate. Drinking before and after activity um, is very important to, to keep healthy in those muscles in all of your body. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. Well, Doug is next with a complete look at the forecast and later it's time for another Thunder Thursday as the team battles to maintain control over the Western Conference. Well, it definitely turned out to be a warmer day today, which was nice to see. Uh, the past couple days have been pretty chilly across the region. We did have a freeze again this morning. That's the last three mornings in a row. We're getting to the close, close to the end of freezes. I think we have, I think April 15th, April 16th. That's the last one that I really see, but that's still two, two and a half weeks away. All right, nice shot. This is our Cornell Arts and Entertainment Complex Tower Cam downtown. Here's 7th and Joplin Street looking northeast through downtown. Looks pretty good, but the winds are going to pick up. Wind advisory in effect for us tomorrow. Winds are going to be gusting 40 to 50, so they're going to be moving across the region, but at least our temperatures staying up. Most of us are sitting into the mid 50s. We'll drop back kind of 48 to 50 later on tonight. 55 south winds at about six across the region. So the winds are light now, but they will slowly get cranking as we get through the overnight hours tonight. In fact, check this out. We're going to have gusts 40 to 50 tomorrow. They stay strong tomorrow evening and then they come down a little bit on Saturday. They're still up there, but they come down a little bit once we get into Saturday. A few little clouds kind of skirting our northern counties. Besides that, we look pretty good. We're kind of tracking our next storm system out to the west. We have this ridge of high pressure. You see this little bump in the upper level winds. Ridge of high pressure rolling in, and then this storm system will start to affect us by the time we get into Easter Sunday. All right, let's go through time. 48 to 50 tonight. Southerly winds increase, upper 60s by noon. A lot of mid and upper level clouds. We should go into the mid 70s for highs for us tomorrow. As we get into tomorrow night, temperatures only drop off into the upper 50s, so it stays fairly mild. Some clouds to start Saturday, could get a random sprinkle, and then by Saturday afternoon, we get back into the mid 70s once again. Friday day planner, 54 in the morning, 67 by noon, high temp, 71 during the afternoon. Let's look at Easter. It's going to be warm. Temperatures are going to press 80 during the afternoon. 61 to start, 73 by noon, 79 by 4. But we could get some thunderstorms during the evening. We have what is called a capped atmosphere, like a lid on the atmosphere, and it keeps the thunderstorms from forming. But if one or two guys can get through that cap, in the yellow will be a hot spot for some strong to severe storms. But our chances increase as we go into Monday, oh, uh, severe thunderstorms pretty likely, or at least a good possibility by the time we get into Monday afternoon. But at least most of the holiday weekend is shaping up pretty good. And we'll look at those storm possibilities on Sunday and Monday in the second half hour. All right, 74 tomorrow, 75 Saturday. Thunderstorm chances Easter, possible alert day Monday with that severe threat cooling down Tuesday and Wednesday. Go to the very end of the 10 day and look at the chances for thunderstorm on Sunday, April 7th. Another storm system moving in mm. and that next day is the eclipse. 
So we got to watch that because we don't want cloud cover. Yeah, hard to see the eclipse if it's covered in clouds. Yeah, it would just get dark when it do anything. So That's no fun. I know. Well, hopefully it works out. Yep. All right, thanks, Doug. Well, coming up, taking steps before it becomes a problem. The White House releasing a new set of rules for artificial intelligence, while the use of AI skyrockets in federal agencies. I'm Caroline Shively in Washington. I'll have that story coming up. The U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission is warning consumers to immediately stop using and dispose of comfy baby infant walkers because they pose a risk of falls and entrapment to children. They say the products violate the federal safety regulations for infant walkers because they can fit through a standard doorway, are not designed to stop at the edge of a step, and have leg openings that allow the child to slip down until the child's head can become entrapped. The infant walkers were sold online on Amazon from October 2022 through March of 2023. The Biden administration today is making moves to combat the misuse of artificial intelligence, issuing the first government-wide policy to mitigate the risk and harness the benefits. Fox's Caroline Shively has the details from Washington. The use of artificial intelligence is overflowing, from teaching machines how to make better beer, <laughs> to transforming the U.S. military and the entire federal government, which increased AI contracts by almost 1,200 percent over just a year, ending last August. So now the White House is unveiling three new requirements for federal agencies. They now must publish a list of the AI systems they're using, verify there is no danger to the public, and name an AI chief for each agency. The American people have a right to know that when and how their government is using AI. The private sector has already felt the shady side of artificial intelligence, with stars like Taylor Swift and Kelly Clarkson having their likenesses used to hawk diet supplements and fake giveaways, while other artists have had their voices copied. I heard a demo a while back. I said, I don't even remember writing that song. They went, uh, you didn't. But now some Republicans in Congress say the White House approach is an overreach and could put the U.S. behind other countries in the race to lead the world in AI. Unnecessary new laws could stifle AI innovation, slowing the arrival of life-enhancing and life-saving breakthroughs, not to mention we don't want China on our heels. The Treasury Department has also released a report that says banks are struggling to fend off AI-powered scammers trying to get to Americans' money. In Washington, Caroline Shively, Fox News. Well, prosecutors called it one of the biggest financial frauds in U.S. history. And now former cryptocurrency mogul Sam Bankman-Fried has been sentenced to 25 years in prison. Before learning his sentence, the 32-year-old apologized for what happened in a packed Manhattan courtroom. A federal grand jury convicted Bankman Freed last November on seven counts of fraud and conspiracy for stealing billions of dollars from customers and investors of his crypto exchange. I think one of the things that really came through in, in the trial that's important to understand here is that it, it, the prosecution was able to show multiple times where Sam had the opportunity to do the right thing to come clean, and he chose not not to do so, going all the way back to 2021 um, when he took customer funds to buy out a multi-billion dollar stake in a previous investor finance to um, using additional customer funds um, during 2022 to um, invest billions in, in other ventures and so on and so forth. The judge also said Bankman Freed lied during his trial testimony and attempted witnessed tampering and ordered him to forfeit $11 billion. His attorneys are expected to appeal his sentence. Up next, the Neosho County, Kansas Health Department hosts a drive through Easter egg hunt. Well, kids in Chanute, Kansas got to celebrate Easter a little early. The Neosho County Health Department today hosted a drive through Easter egg hunt. Officials say the drive through style event started after they did a similar event for Christmas at the height of COVID. They decided to continue the trend for Easter and it's stuck around ever since. It's just wonderful to see them come in and see them smile and make, see them come in maybe drooping and watch them walk out smiling. And you'll see the kids as they come through. Even the handicapped children are able to drive through. They don't have to worry about getting out if they don't want to and the bunny will go to the car. And there was also a photo booth with the Easter Bunny at the end of the hunt. 30 more minutes of news, weather and sports is coming your way. Why a Missouri family is suing St. Louis County 
following a police raid. Plus an update on the status of a medical marijuana bill in Kansas. Watching the four states most watched news. This is KOAM News at 9 on Fox 14. I'm Tanya Bach. A family in Ferguson, Missouri is suing St. Louis County after a SWAT team raided their home by mistake. The lawsuit alleges the police used an Apple tracking feature to trace a pair of Apple AirPods that were inside a stolen vehicle. Now, the tracking brought officers to the family's home. However, the lawsuit claims the AirPods were found outside and not inside the home. Diamond Palmer has more. Attorneys provided us with this body cam footage they obtained through a records request. Showing the moment St. Louis County Police conducted a SWAT raid in Ferguson on Wyland Court on May 26, 2023. St. Louis County Police with a search warrant come to the front door. They shouted. The shouting lasted about 20 seconds. The lady was in her house in her underwear. She had the baby in the back. Attorneys Beavis Shock and Eric Veith are representing Lindell Briscoe, Brittany Shamley, and their five children. They're suing St. Louis County and the detective who ordered the raid. Police say hours before the raid, a group of six people carjacked someone in South St. Louis. A witness told police Apple AirPods were in the car. Police used the Find My application and traced the AirPods to the family's home. The lawsuit says police had the wrong house and the AirPods were later found in the street, not inside the home. We think the public needs to be aware of how much SWAT is used, what are the circumstances that justify it. Once inside, SWAT officers demanded Brittany go outside. It took nearly four minutes for one of the officers to bring the crying baby outside to its mother. Brittany's husband was in his work truck with two of the children at home. Officers also pointed large guns at him. You can't do every interaction with the police with a SWAT team. That's not fair or reasonable to the public. And Shock says he wants the case tried. If we try it, we'll hear the evidence. What's going on with these SWAT teams? Are we going to tolerate this in our community or not? The family is seeking an unspecified amount of damages for what it says was loss of liberty and unreasonable use of force and seizure. There's not been an immediate comment from St. Louis County. Well, the Kansas Senate is tackling a bill to create a medical marijuana pilot program until next year's legislative session. A bill stuck in committee faced opposition from both pro-marijuana activists and law enforcement officials, though for different reasons. It would have created a five-year pilot program with a minimum legal age of 21. Activists say that would leave out thousands of adult patients. The director of the Kansas Bureau of Investigation also opposed the legislation, calling it a wolf in sheep's clothing, leading to recreational legalization. Well, a couple of area cities, one in Kansas and one in Oklahoma, are among the cheapest to live comfortably. A new study from SmartAsset.com has determined the amount needed to live comfortably in 99 U.S. cities. The cheapest is Houston, Texas, where a single adult needs an hourly wage of $36.10. Tulsa ranks as the eighth cheapest with a necessary wage of $38.98. Wichita follows right behind at nine, needing a wage of just six cents more. That seems a little bit higher than minimum wage. Well, a bit later, we all recognize the importance of recycling, so why don't more people participate? We're going to take a look at the reasons. Well, it turned out to be a pretty nice day for us today. We got back into the mid-60s right where we should be for this time of the year. We're not going to be near as cold for us tonight, which is great. Uh, we had three nights of freezes across the region, so we don't have to deal with that. Right now, it's sitting at 55. We'll drop back to about 48 or 50 later on tonight. Now, the winds are pretty light. They're starting to slowly increase. And these are really going to get moving for us as we get into late tonight and tomorrow morning, we're going to have winds gusting 40 upwards to 50. So that's why we are under a wind advisory for your Friday. Look at this. I mean, 45 pushing 50 mile per hour wind gusts, even into Saturday, especially our southern counties. We're still going to have gusts in that 25 to 30 mile per hour range. So not good to burn at least the next couple days. All right, we have some clouds kind of skirting our northern counties. Besides that, 
most of the central plains looking pretty good. A little bit of a ridge, high pressure, you can see a little bump in the upper level winds, giving us that nice weather. And then here's our next storm system building out across the Pacific Northwest. That will start to affect us on Easter Sunday. Let's walk you through time. Near 50 tonight, winds really pick up. A lot of mid and upper level clouds kind of stream through tomorrow. Near 70 by noon, as we get into the afternoon, most of us 74, 75, so it looks pretty good. Tomorrow night, some clouds increase, could get a random sprinkle by Saturday morning. We only drop into the mid 50s. Then Saturday, northern counties, you guys stay near 70. Southern counties will go into the upper 70s by Saturday afternoon. Clouds increase, random shower as we get into Sunday morning, but overall looks pretty good. Day planner for your Friday, 54 in the morning, 67 by noon. High temp, 74 degrees. Let's take a look at Easter Sunday. We have uh, that storm system moving in. I think most of the day is going to be mostly cloudy, warm and windy, near 80. But some thunderstorm chances increase by the evening if they can develop. If they can get going, we'll have a few strong to severe ones in this yellow blob. But as we get into Monday in the orange, a higher potential for severe weather. So let's take a look at it. We're going to start moving into Easter Sunday. Some showers and thunderstorms to our north in the morning. Most of the day should be dry. We warm upper 70s and then Sunday evening. A few thunderstorms try to get going. If those can occur, they could be strong to severe. Thunderstorms scattered Monday morning. And then here's where it gets tricky. If we can clear out fast enough, we'll get a line of severe thunderstorms that will march through once we get into Monday afternoon. Let's go 74 tomorrow, 75 on Saturday, 79 on Easter Sunday. Possible alert day Monday with those thunderstorm chances and then cooling down once we get to Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. All right, well, it sounds like we're in for a fun weekend of uh, weather. Yeah, hopefully I, we can get our weekend, Easter celebrations yeah, most in. Yeah, the weekend's going to be fine. Yeah, so. the bunny will get its eggs delivered and yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right, thanks, Doug. Well, coming up in sports, Sports Scott softball tries to move to two and zero on the season. Plus, it's opening day for Major League Baseball. The Royals and Cardinals both play today. John Dales has those stories and more up next. Hey, welcome into Thunder Thursday here on Fox 14. 72 games down in the NBA regular season, just 10 left before the playoffs. The race for the top spot in the West still heating up. Shea Gilgis Alexander out with a quad injury in the Thunder's game last night. He's dealing with that injury and it came back to bite them. OKC loses in overtime by six to the Rockets. That slides them into a two-way tie with the Timberwolves for second place in the West. They're each a half game behind the Nuggets. Now, tomorrow is our sixth Thunder Friday night of the year. OKC welcomes the Phoenix Suns to Paycom Center. Wrestling fans, if you want to see WWE SmackDown, that will air in its entirety following our newscast tomorrow night. Fort Scott Softball won its home opener just, over, just under a week ago amidst the wind and rain. Now this afternoon, the Tigers are treated to a little bit better conditions for game two. Baxter Springs softball on the road this afternoon, taking on Fort Scott. And the Lady Lions strike early. Top of the first inning, Micah Adams sends this pitch into right field. She hustles into second with a double and would score later in the inning. Fort Scott falls behind 1-0 but doesn't blink. Bottom of the first. Riley, Rayleigh Cowan muscles that one into left field. That's an RBI single. Lady Tigers far from finish. Kendall Aiken, the freshman, blasts one into deep left center. That drives in two more runs, and she slides in safely with a triple. Fort Scott scores five that inning. Bats stay quiet until the fifth. Chopper here goes to short. The throw gets away. That brings in J.C. Rogers, one of two runs to score that inning. The Tigers turn to Aiken on the mound to finish this one out. She gets four strikeouts in the last two innings. Fort Scott improves to 2-0. The Lady Tigers win it 8-4. Well, over at Warren Turner Field on the campus of Missouri Southern, Webb City Baseball faces Lakes Community, visiting from Illinois. Bottom of the second, Cohen Epler hits a blooper into shallow left field. That ball finds the ground, and two runs are going to come in to score. 
Epler has himself a pair of RBIs. It's 2-0 Webb City. Third inning now, Sean Hunt rips this one into center field over the outfielder's head. Drew Vonderhaar comes around to score, and Hunt picks up an RBI double. Cardinals on top 3-1. to one. Later on in the third, two on, two out, Hunter Scholl hits this under the first baseman's glove. Two more runs score. Webb City extends its lead to 5-1. Into the fourth, here's Hunt again. He hammers this pitch towards the fence. Not quite enough for a home run, but that brings in another score. Lakes Community gets back into the game, but Webb City hangs on to win it 8-7. Well, it's a beautiful day for baseball, not only in the four states, but across the country. Major League Baseball celebrates its 2024 opening day. Bobby Wood Jr. taking the field at Kauffman Stadium on opening day, as does Andy Reid showing off the Lombardi Trophy, and he throws out the first pitch to George Brett. Top of the first inning, no score. Royce Lewis takes Cole Reagans deep. That's a solo home run in the top of the first, and the Twins lead 1-0. However, the Royals waste no time in responding. Bottom of the first, Michael Garcia. Just the third pitch he sees on the season, he hits a solo homer. That ties the game at one. Beyond that point though, Minnesota adds another run in the third, two more in the ninth, and the Royals don't score at all the rest of the way. KC falls at home to the Twins on opening day, final score four to one. Meanwhile, the Cardinals over in Los Angeles taking on the Dodgers. Shohei Otani making his debut with his new team, and in his first at bat, he lines one off Miles Michaelis into the corner That'll roll around for extra bases, but check this out. Mookie Betts stops at third. Shohei Otani gets caught between second and third, and eventually the Cardinals are gonna run him down and tag him out. So no run surrendered. That would be a sign of things to come though. Bottom of the third, St. Louis down two nothing. Mookie Betts crushes this pitch to deep left field. That's gone. Dodgers extend their lead to three to nothing. The Cardinals, Fall behind early and never recover. They lose as well, seven to one. Meanwhile, March Madness also happening and a big upset, rather big upset earlier today. Clemson, the sixth seed, moves on to the Elite Eight. They take down two seed Arizona. I had Arizona winning. Yeah, I had them in the final four, so that hurts. Yeah, I have one final four team left. UConn. We, all right, yeah, they look good tonight. One yeah, big. Yeah, well, but they don't have it. I don't have them winning at all. Yeah. Arizona was supposed to beat them. It's too bad. Back with more news after this. A majority of Americans think recycling is important, but why don't many people participate? Fox News' Ted Linder takes a closer look at the reasons, plus how you and your family can get more involved. Reduce, reuse, recycle. It's a simple phrase packing big meaning. Recycling helps keep more waste from winding up in landfills, where piles of plastic trash takes hundreds of years to decompose releasing harmful greenhouse gas emissions like methane in the process. According to data from the nonprofit group Project Drawdown, recycling between 2020 and 2050 is expected to reduce emissions by 5.5 to 6 gigatons of carbon dioxide. That's equal to removing more than 1 billion vehicles off the streets for a year. And we really have to think about uh, the bigger picture. But while a 2022 study by the World Economic Forum found 94% of Americans support recycling, only 35% actually do it. The main reason stopping people is a lack of convenience and confusion over what exactly can be recycled. Pay attention to the labels on the package and look for the ways that they are sort of indicating for you to recycle them. Uh, because it actually hurts the system if you recycle in the wrong way. But the buck doesn't stop with recycling cups, bottles, and containers. Food waste is a big uh, portion of um, the waste that, um, that goes into the landfill. The Environmental Protection Agency says composting is nature's way of recycling. James Sternberg of Clemson University says a lack of industrial composting centers makes it harder for more people to compost. If you can't compost at home, Sternberg recommends thinking about how much food you buy so you don't overconsume. The EPA reports food waste results in more methane emissions than any other material breaking down in landfills. Ted Lindner, Fox News. Well, coming up, we'll check out the new movies releasing this week in theaters and streaming services. A monster movie, a horror sequel, documentaries and more heading to screens this week. Here's Fox's Ashley Devorkin with a look at what's new in theaters and streaming.
Titans take over the big screen with Godzilla Kong, the new empire, which brings the monsterverse to hollow earth when a new threat emerges. The PG French film A Cat's Life follows the bond between a girl and the kitten she rescued as they go on vacation with her family. The horror sequel Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey 2 is in theaters through March 28th. It's part of the twisted childhood universe with standalone films and the upcoming Pooniverse Monsters Assemble. The thriller Asphalt City with Ty Sheridan, Sean Penn, Mike Tyson, and Kaylee Reese is about a young New York City paramedic learning on the night shift with his seasoned partner. Liam Neeson and Carrie Condon lead in the land of saints and sinners, which is set in 1970s Ireland, and follows a man looking to leave his dark past behind until a trio of vengeful terrorists arrive in his village. Thinking you're better than us just because you can kick a ball. On streaming, Netflix has The Beautiful Game, inspired by the Homeless World Cup, with Bill Nighy as the manager of England team. Apple TV Plus has the two-part documentary Steve Martin spanning the actor's career. Disney Plus adds Madu about 12-year-old Anthony Madu who leaves Nigeria to follow his dreams at one of the world's most prestigious ballet schools. My family. In series, Hulu premieres the bestseller turned limited series We Were the Lucky Ones with Joey King and Logan Lerman, inspired by the true story of a Jewish family separated at the start of World War II. No witnesses, no suspects. Prime Video picks up the story of American Rust with Broken Justice, starring Jeff Daniels and Maura Tierney. Fraggle Rock! Plus, the music filled fun of Fraggle Rock Back to the Rock is back with season two on Apple TV. In Hollywood, Ashley Devorkin, Fox News. I love Fraggle Rock. That's our time for tonight. Thanks for joining us. We're going to leave you with video of a volcano erupting against the backdrop of the Northern Lights in Iceland. Amazing. Have a great night and an even better tomorrow.